So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just as a very faint yelp, as if some tiny person were calling for help. I say, murmured Horton, I never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why? I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust. Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person no matter how small. Horton Hears a Who is an amazing story by Dr. Seuss. It's about an elephant who fights for the rights of those who live in Whoville. It's interesting that Dr. Seuss teaches us some timeless principles and biblical principles that a person is a person no matter how small. Every Christian understands this principle because God has created us in His image. We all have intrinsic value. That's why this month we're talking about fairness. Fairness is simply defined as making sure everyone is treated respectfully. We hope that during this month, as a parent and maybe as a leader, you will unpack this principle for children so that they will grow up and understand what it really means to treat those around them with fairness. Several years ago, a friend of mine's daughter was in third grade. It just so happened that in this particular school, she got to be part of a club. She was asked to be in this club along with several other girls. and. Uh, you know, he specifically remembers her coming home one day and, and saying to her dad, Dad, you know, there's this issue at school because this new girl has shown up. She comes from a different background, a different race, and the girls are, are saying that she can't be in the club. I, I really don't know what to do. He talked to, about the situation with her, and then over the next few days, he kind of forgot about it. Finally, about a week or two later, he said, Well, Hannah, what did you do? You, you never finished a story. And she said, well, I went back to school and I basically left the club I was in and asked this girl to start a club with me. The two of us started our own club and we invited girls from the other club to join our club. Eventually all the girls left the first club and came to the second club with a new girl. In this situation, Hannah basically illustrated fairness. She understood that in God's eyes, even though we're all unique, God loves us all the same. And because God is in us, we're supposed to love the people around us the same. She, she realized, probably better than most people, that we'll be surrounded by people every day and we will have a choice to make. How we're going to treat those people? Are we going to treat them like they're made in the image of God? What, what would happen if all of a sudden every child in our ministry grew up and believed that a person is a person no matter how small and that everyone around them is created in God's image. Our goal this month is to help every kid see that the people around them, the way God sees them. You're going to spend this month talking about certain principles in scripture that will help children treat the people around them respectfully. For example, we're going to start in the book of James. On week one, we're going to be looking in the book of James and be talking about how we need to treat the rich and the poor the same. Then on week two, we're going to be unpacking the classic story of the Good Samaritan. On week three, we're going to talk about Saul and how we need to treat everyone the same and fairly, even if we perceive them as our enemies. Finally, on week four, we're going to be talking about Jesus and the great commission he gives us. And that's the plan of salvation. It's for everyone, no matter how big or how small. God's plan for everyone to go to heaven is the same plan regardless of how rich they are, regardless of how poor they are, and regardless of where they come from. Remember the scene in Horton Hears a Who, where Horton has a speck of dust with the town of Whoville and puts it on a clover? All of a sudden it gets stolen and dropped by a bird into an entire field of clovers. Dr. Seuss gives us an image of Horton pursuing and trying to find find it in all these thousands and thousands of clovers where the people of Whoville might be. It's really rather remarkable thought when you look at this planet in perspective of our galaxy and you look at our galaxy in perspective of the, of the entire universe. We are kind of like the people of Whoville. We are pretty insignificant and small yet the creator of the entire universe is pursuing us in a very passionate and persistent way. You know what that means? That means that God loves every one of us the same. So as we apply that in our lives, and especially as we apply that in the lives of children, we need to teach them 
that the love of God has for them is the same love that God wants them to have for those around them. That's why we want children to grow up and to pay attention to those in need. That's why we want children to grow up and understand how to help people who may not have a voice to be heard. That's why we want them to believe that a person is a person no matter how small. The memory verse we want children to learn this month is Proverbs 31.9. It says, speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. Don't underestimate your potential as a parent or as a possible leader of a small group. This world can be a different place if children grow up in our ministry walking away believing that they are not supposed to show favoritism and prejudice to the world around them. Instead, they step in and love people who are different. Decide to love their own enemies and, de and determine that their mission in life is to show everyone they come in contact with the love of God and what it means to have a relationship with Him. So this month we're going to teach our kids to know and love Jesus and to love and serve others. And the best way for that to happen is when parents are teaching their kids about that. Because what happens at home is more important than what happens at church.